What do birds and trees have in common? Not much. However, purely due to the resemblance, this leaf shares an anatomical characteristic with feathers. Today, we talk about the rachis. Now, as we've already discussed, a pinnately compound leaf is a leaf with a central axis or a line and little subunits called leaflets that arise on either side of this axis. In other words, this leaf is feather shaped. As a matter of fact, because these two resemble each other, the central axis in both the pinnately compound leaf and in a feather is called a rachis. Now, without a rachis, a leaf cannot be pinnately compound. This rachis or central axis is the defining characteristic of a pinnately compound leaf. And not only is the presence of a rachis important for identification, but also its characteristics. A rachis may be hairy or not. It may be armed with sharp spines, or it may be waxy. There are many ways a rachis can vary. Like most pinnately compound leaves, the rachis of white ash is round. You can roll it between your fingers. Here's a different pinnately compound leaf. This leaf belongs to winged sumac, Rus copalina. Unlike white ash, or unlike the other sumacs, this leaf has a rachis that is winged rather than round. This makes it very easy to identify, and this is actually where this species gets its common name. So, next time you're out looking at pinnately compound leaves, pay special attention to the rachis.